Okay, guys, we are here with session number three for Mario's Scoop main event review from start to finish. We went through at least 3% already. So we are going to have some exciting more um, sessions in front of us. We actually spent a really nice weekend celebrating my birthday. So I'm happy to get into the content grind again. Also, there's w WSOP online on GG coming up in August and September. And if you haven't heard it, we're going to host our first Poker Good Festival from 9th to 12th September. So book your hotel through us. It's gonna be insane. We're going to do community events and uh, run a 500 euro main where you can play against some champions and fellow Poker Code members. So Mario, you're gonna be there too, right? I will be there. Ah, oh, amazing. So people can talk and berate you. So guys, let's get into it. I'm ready. I'm hyped, Mario. I'm ready. Ace check, I flat call the button and I would say we jump in there. Okay, let's do it. So I- Maybe the first question here, how often do you three bet this year? How often do you call? I would mostly call it. I don't see that much benefit raising ace check because I get all the calls from like ace queen is just a pure call from his perspective and ace 10 off is a pure fold. So it, he calls ace checks you. So I don't fold out that many me dominating hands out, but I still keep all the hands that I'm dominating in. So I would rather choose different hand class to three bet, probably like like a6 or a8 suited is just a better three bet because you fold out dominated hands or queen check suited, check 10 suited. It's just you follow the dominated hands. So I, I would approach the spot like this and ace check off here as very high frequency call. Okay. What would, how, would you, how would you do it? Yeah, not, not too different. I mean, I would always call this specific hand. I'm just thinking like, I, I think optimal ranges like you, you can make the same argument for the other hands, right? Like, I mean, Jack 10 suited or Queen 10 suited is probably, or Queen 10 suited is probably the best example for what you mentioned, but also with Ace 8 suited, you could also say, oh, you keep in worse, worse suited hands that you dominate. So uh, I'm actually not sure if I like the Ace 8 suited argument so much. Mm -hmm. um, I also flat call Ace 8 suited here really often because people over call too much from the big blind. So I'm like, I'm often ways in these dominated uh, flash over flash situations, especially when we are like, you know, 50 to 90 big steep. So yeah, I, I much more see the argument actually with a hand like King Jack off or Ace nine or Ace 10 off or yeah, like Queen 10 suited or yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can move the way to the flop. <laughs> and here we have the first decision. I thought in that spot, I really wasn't sure if I had, if I want to have a high betting frequency or not, or like some, I pr probably get somewhere around 25 to 35% frequency and the small sizing, because I don't, I, I mean, I have all the deuces, all the threes, all the fives and some ace for suited and not flush draws. So that's really a key. So I will assume that I can bet sometimes. And here with the async labs, I think with the vector flash drive, I just would prefer to check and not like using the, the vector flash draw here, I would rather bet ace check off, not having the vector flash because if I get check raised, it's an easier, just a bad fold. And it's really tricky with the, like I just waste a lot of vector equity by check for uh, bet folding here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think pretty reasonable. I, I think it's, it's also, it should be a, a bit quicker because like, I, I think this is just basically a, a pure check just because it has too much equity, right? Like yeah. this scenario, the small blind is in a really tricky spot with the under gun player still to act. Yeah. So he has to play rather tight and the under the gun player, if he plays proper ranges, he doesn't even have deuces and threes. So I, I think this is a board that I want to be stabbing like check the middle, stab some of the weaker stuff um, mm -hmm. that has some equity and then um, have some give ups and then value, like bet my value. So I think ace jack, ace of spades here just needs to be in the checking range. Mm -hmm. Turn, pretty good. What is your fallen turn? I think super clear check. 
Like, I, I think it's not even the discussion. Like, I, I think about it, right? What <laughs> is the upside of a bet? And what is the upside of a check? And the upside of a bet is value from some flush draws. So it's basically a bet against equity, but what has equity here? And it's basically spades and you want spades to hit. And it is uh, straights, which are the only hands that are continuing besides like two pair and, and sets. Mm -hmm. So like a bet on the turn is just not really achieving much, I think. Whereas, you know, if, if small blind has the 10 of spades, like it's probably already a fold. Yeah. So, you know, so it's like, I want people to be bluffing into me on the river. I want people to be hitting their spades. So I think it's a very clear, pure, mm -hmm. pure check on the turn. What do you do with, without the ace and spades? Um, and I consider start betting very small. Mm -hmm. Okay, check back, river past the board. And not sure I go for half pot. I think at this point, once I check twice, uh, I might get some some pair calls, maybe the under the gun player sometimes calls eights through kings. And uh, yeah, I think I can value bet here the low straight and then get Yeah, two. I think it's too large of a sizing. Like, yeah, you, you gotta really watch out of like, I mean, yes, you know, maybe it's like even more exploiting if people start calling eights, but they shouldn't. Yeah. Like against that sizing, under the gun just has so many ace x that he also should be checking like a ton. Mm -hmm. So I I just don't really see it. So I, I much rather bet like, you know, between 25 and 33% here mm -hmm. and like make make their life tough with their pockets aids. If you bet, you know, almost half pot here, it's like, okay, take it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I wouldn't want to increase the mistake by too much. You know, you could also say, oh, if you bet two thirds and he calls kings, but like I much rather just take the mistake and and realize it. Um, because they they check way too weak, that's clear. And so against that I just wanna get a little bit basically. And, and I think it's a theoretical bet as well. I don't really think, I, I can't really see really many bets like that here. Okay, I middle position against high check, six, six, five flop. Okay. We are pretty much all in. 60, 50 blinds deep. Oh, so I'm gonna pull it up on the side, let it run, single wrist flop. Okay, what is your thought process here? You said- uh, no, what is yours? Stop asking me. Okay, so my thought process on the flop is what am I achieving with different sizings? Here with a small size, his range is pretty, pretty constanced and doesn't have many uh, weekends. So yes, it's, it, it, it lacks the top part, it lacks ace-king, it lacks aces, kings, queens, it sometimes lacks checks, but it has, it hardly ever has king ten off, for example. So, if I bet small, I have very little uh, fold equity here. On the other hand, I think with a big sizing, he has, he has a hard time defending with this exact part with like king queen in uh, diamonds, king check in, in hearts. Hands like this, even ace highs. So especially with a hand that benefits from folding out higher cards, I would say that uh, with this specific hand, we have somewhere around two thirds to I'm not sure if we go as big as pot, but somewhere around two thirds to 80% on the flop. And I go with that. Yeah, I'm also in my, in my mind, I'm visualizing a bit around, I, I think there's two bigger parts that it's polarizing towards too. And it's like, you have the threshold where, where does he struggle with like a majority of his range, which is he flats the king jack of hearts. He flats the, you know, the ace eight of hearts, stuff like that, where it's like, okay, that struggles against a certain size. Then he has, you know, the King Jack, like the, the overcard backdoor type of stuff. And then he has the pairs. And I think you got to think about, okay, what are the hands that the, the medium to strong, when do they start to struggle, right? If he has pocket fours, like what, what do they struggle against? And so I'm just trying to build these like, okay, um, you know, if he has a flush draw, it's going to be a very large size, like, <laughs> couldn't even go, you know, all in, like it could, you, you barely can't go with that. If he has a pair, 
And if it's an under pair, then it's like a you know medium to large size. And if it's an over pair, also again is in this. So so you you I built these categories. So you have this really large size against his sevens, eights, and flush draws. You have uh, you know which is kind of draw. And then I'm thinking, okay, is there this hand? And I think it's definite. There is definitely these type of hands because I've, if I have pocket jacks, no spade, like. I want to start bombing this spot because he has no aces. He has no Kings. He has no Queens. He should not have. It's like pure three bets, free flop. So it's like, okay, if I have pocket jacks fire, like, yes, he has pocket five. Sometimes he's pocket sixes sometimes, but I'm going to build this really big bet size against his flush draws and, and, and over pairs. And then I'm looking at, you know, kind of the next uh, strongest part, which is uh, I want to attack his pocket fours. I want to attack his ace Jack. I want to, so, so you're going to have this sizing as well. And then you're going to have this sizing as well, where you just attack his King Jack of hearts, you know, like two over cards, no backdoor, stuff like that. So, so I think you're going to see kind of three poles of sizings that you, you will use here. And I think it's a probably also going to be just frequency distributed between these, these different sizes. But I, I think there's going to be a smaller sizing. I think there's going to be a larger sizing and the larger sizing can be pretty large. So that's, that's what I assume. Mm -hmm. We even go as big as pot, a little bit over pot, and exactly as you said, like we see very clearly that nines through through queens just benefit a lot from charging all the over pairs because they never fold or can just not fold. Um, and we start putting money in the pot against the flash draws as well. Here with eight seven, we do mix it. We go more for the check, but I also, if we look at the, we go mostly for. 80 or 100 percent let me actually um now right i formulated the hypothesis and mm -hmm. now i just want to showcase how i improve my thinking process mm -hmm. right so i formulated a hypothesis i i said there i i think there's going to be a large bed sizing and that there's going to be a smaller bed sizing and now what is very clear is that i had a flaw in my thinking and now it's very imminent looking at this what my flaw was and my flaw was that i overestimated the equity advantage and looking at this range, it becomes super clear as, um, actually, is like this small bet sizing would exist if you would have a stronger range, but you don't. So the in-position player actually has relatively quite many pairs. So you don't really want to bet the small sizing in a relatively strong in-position range. So that was just my flaw in thinking is like, I significantly overestimated the equity advantage of the in-position player. Just even not, I, I didn't consciously like very much think about that. If I would have had that thought process, I probably would have come to the conclusion that it's, it's probably going to be no small bet sizing because you, all these small bets are just going to be checks because you don't have a strong enough range to, to support that. And so there's these, you know, you, you saw how I created these different logics of how I built how I build this bet sizing, but if your opponent has a stronger range than you, it doesn't really make sense to challenge his range with a small bet because you're just putting money in against a stronger range um, in terms of equity, a uh, stronger range. So you have lots of no hit hands as well. You have lots of queen 10 hearts, queen nine hearts more than he does. So that's why you're, you will build this big, betting range because you do have these tens plus that just want to fire or, or nines plus you probably better to say but the part where i talked about the smaller bet size that doesn't exist because that's just the, the the thinking was right in terms of we could if we would have an advantage but we don't so it's just checks and you will see this very often that if you don't have the advantage then it will just be a checking range that builds around the check raising, check calling range. And if you do have the advantage, it would just build kind of, a, it, it, it charges your opponent. Yeah. So if, if you put in a tighter range for us, you would, you will start to see smaller bets with a higher frequency um, just to charge his King Jack. But right now we can't charge because we have more King seven and we have more uh, Queen nine and so on. So we just want to protect our VP IP in range more to see turns to see rivers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's type of the dynamic you will see very often. Mm -hmm. And we got to welcome Thompson, our stream team member. What's hey. up, Mammoth as well. So some people joining, welcome to our review session number three. We're looking at 566 six, six with a flash draw. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I did chose. I went for two thirds. 
I think I, I should go a little bit bigger uh, and check it higher frequency. I will probably have betted too much this combination in game. I would probably would have done overdone it a little bit. He calls turn pairs. So I go for five blinds on the flop in position calls. And we see he still calls some king 10 in hearts, king check in hearts, king queen in diamonds. Mm -hmm. We might, I, I would assume that he might fold some of these already on the flop. Yeah, totally. I actually don't think exploitatively that this is overdoing it. It's important to understand that you are at a disadvantage here. So you want to build more around your checking range and protect that to just see, like to realize more of the equity. And that's the, probably the key flaw in your thinking. Like you probably also overestimated like, oh, you saw seven, eight and you were like, oh, it's just, you know, it has equity. I got to bet this end type of thinking, but it's actually more like embedding it in your overall range thinking and your overall range equity thinking. And then you will see, ah, I need to put a lot of nines plus in my checking range as well. So I can't just pure bet it, which also means you can't just pure bet seven, eight. So, so that's probably the next level thinking we, we need to extract from here on out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the turn, my thought process was that it's good to unblock the flash doors on the turn. If it busts in the river, I can bet it through, but on the, on the turn, I might get some fold from uh, ace highs and, and king highs and seven, eight is just one of the one of the weakest hands that I can have that still have equity and benefit from folding out king and ace size. So I've, I, my perception was that it would be one of my best bluff candidates. And uh, therefore I, I think I went with a, again, with a 70% sizing, uh, he calls. And um, as you can see here, it's, it's around, two thirds to uh, 80%. So it's, it's fine both. It, 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 sh it shows like it's sometimes betting big on the flop, sometimes betting big on the, on the turn. But what I need to be careful is that if I do that every time, then it's just way overdue. It might be still, it might still work. It might still be, be good. But I think uh, if someone is aware of that, that I do that too much, then they just are able to call down um, way too much. And the river is, I think it's really hearts. Yeah. And yeah, for me, for me on the arriving on the river, I think flop seems uh, both options fine. Turn seems still both options fine. But on the river, I think with seven, eight, with all the flush was busted, I think I have a pretty clear jam and going for it. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? You gotta, you gotta watch out like, if you would give a solver too many bluffs on flop and turn, mm -hmm. it won't give you this output. So be very careful with this idea of, oh, you know, like I maybe over bluff flop, I maybe over bluff turn, but now in the river, this hand has to go in. It's like, no, the, the, the frequency has to be right. Mm -hmm. So if you bluffed, you know, 200% too many bluffs on the flop and 200% too many bluffs on river, you have to give up a lot of hands on the river. And so that's, just, you know, because then you easily fall in this trap of like, oh, I just got here with this hand. So now I got to bluff it. But then it's like just a pure call for the imposition guy. And, you know, so it's not just automatically because you got with a, you know, bad hand that will lose 100% that showdown to the river that you then got to bluff it. No, it's more important to first think about what's the correct frequency according to your value hands because these are the drivers of what you can bluff. It's not how many bluffs you have, it's how much value you have. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I, I, I thought I have all the, all the checks, tens plus, but as you can see, if we leave the weighted out, it becomes a very little pumps. Like in this specific, like with this specific sizing, we arrive at very, very little combos on the river. I ended up jamming. And he didn't really have a hard decision. And uh, yeah, he pre-called <laughs> the aces. So uh, Solva says the 5%, he, he rolled the 5% uh, called aces and uh, got me there. So 
Actually, take a look at the it, it, seven eight. Is for some reason he doesn't really like seven eight so much. Yeah, if you look uh, at it, you know, like it's it's not it's not one of his favorite bluffs, and I I'm not entirely sure why he doesn't like the eight so much. Um, I mean, obviously, this now is is you know it's always it's always a bit misleading to look at the unweighted strategy, but seven eight I think because of blockers and the, the equilibrium you will see something like that because every hand that doesn't have enough showdown value is just jamming and every hand you know like it's so i think it's mostly because because eights are folding so he way rather jams yeah. seven than seven eights so that is the that is the logic so yeah. i think sevens are a higher frequency folding than eights in reality like most people don't have the yeah uh, process makes seven eight bad right if sevens and eights are the highest yeah. frequency folds like <laughs> one have nine ten yeah so that, that's like that's important to understand that oftentimes on the river then now this is the worst hand you can bluff you know it's good that it doesn't have spades but it's like much worse than king queen like rather triple barrel king queen of hearts you know yeah. um, because you you un, you block six combos of the most like the hundred percent call flop, the hundred percent call turn, hundred percent pre-flop call, and a hundred percent fold river or or high frequency fold river. Yeah. Like, don't underestimate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, next turn is, and that's where I get in seven blinds. I think I lose ace nine to queens, and mm -hmm. I pass the first. Entry. Aww. So total of two entries. I busted this one. Let's hope the next one runs a little, a little smoother. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Let's hope things are going better now. And six. 